Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Southeast Radio. Well, for many convenience stores around the country, the stock management process for their non barcoded food items has become an arduous task. However, my next guest, Patrick McDermott, through his business, Digitally, is providing a software solution which can help food businesses with stock management and ultimately save them money. Patrick, we'll be discussing Digitally, but first, I'd like to gain an insight into your own background. Carol, thank you. Great to be here. Yeah, originally from Dundalk, now living in Galway, um, in Tumen, Galway, is where we're based. And my own background is in hospitality, where two weeks after I done my leaving search, I started working in Jury's Hotel in Dublin, the Commons Restaurant. It was one of uh, seven Michelin star restaurants in the country at the time. I then went off travelling for a year. Then I started working on cruise ships for five years. And then I went to Galway for the weekend. And 18 years later, I'm still there. <laughs> and I have to say I'm a very, very fond cruiser myself. I've often said that the training that's given on cruise ships to their staff is second to none. Yeah, cruise ships, it's one of those jobs that uh, you either love it or hate it. And I think one thing that you need is a good, strong work ethic to start with, uh, because there's a statistic that it's over 60% of people don't make it through their first contract, because the thoughts of working uh, between four to six months, uh, seven days a week, 10 to 14 hours a day, uh, doesn't tend to appeal to many people. And when I was leaving uh, 18 years ago, the pay per month was $50. Um, obviously, you made more of it. On, it was all about tips and about gratuities. Um, but yeah, it was getting hard. It was getting tough. But you work for your money. So what is Digitally? It's a service-based business where it works with retail, hospitality uh, businesses. What we found in the last number of years is that there's a lot of FMCG customers, so convenience stores and supermarkets. A lot of those customers, they were starting to take out their retail stock um, and putting in more bakery, more deli, and really going into it in a big way, so much so that it's about 50% of some of our customers' turnover. These are your standard convenience stores. But yet, they were retailers. They weren't food operators. So we've seen a a market there for us to create a digital product that would enable them to count and report on their gross profit margin significantly better. Because you see, with those businesses, it's not like buying a bottle of Coke and selling a bottle of Coke. You're buying in a baguette and you're selling it as five different things. You're buying rashers and using it in 10 different things. So the management of the food, uh, the margin goes up and down. And unless it's managed correctly, losses will occur. So how does your system actually work then? With Digitally, the way it works is uh, it's we take their, all of the list of products, we upload it to the cloud. It's 100% digital. Um, so it eliminates the manual counting and reporting of uh, of non-barcoded stock because we know the problem with counting food is that it doesn't have barcodes. So what people t- traditionally do is write it down and then put it into Excel and then send it off. What we do is we digitize that through an app and then the app syncs with the cloud. Uh, it integrates with third-party EPOS systems, the electronic point of sale, or it could be a procurement system, whatever IT system that they already have in place. And then it generates the margin. But one of the other challenges also is that food is perishable. Exactly, exactly. The food is perishable. It doesn't last and you need to be a turn on that food because, uh, as you said, it, it, it's perishable, it will go off. It's, uh, again, not something that can sit in the shelf. And uh, the margin does fluctuate. And when the margin is fluctuate, you really need to be on top of it. Now, there's also another aspect of it. When it comes to the likes of care homes uh, that we started working with recently, that when there's food waste, it's not just waste that's thrown in a bin. It also contributes to undernutrition of residents. So the serious health benefits to it. And Patrick, you mentioned, of course, care homes and convenience stores, but what other sectors and industries is this particular product aimed at? We primarily look at food businesses, multi-site food businesses. And not to say that a single site can't get a benefit, but it's primarily multi-site because there's three, four different aspects to our software. One is the, the, the person who's actually using it, the countess, the, the most mundane of work. There's a benefit to them. There's the single site manager. So uh, someone in a, in a hotel, pub, restaurant, cafe that only looks after their site, their margins, their waste. There's then the, the overall senior group management overview so they can see all sites on one dashboard immediately. And the fourth part then 
is that they can do that off their mobile phone. And is the Digitally software available on a subscription-based model? Yeah, it's a SaaS-based business, so software as a service it works off of either monthly or as uh, paying annually in advance. When people are paying annually in advance, we incorporate in the integration with third-party systems. Um, so what I mean by that is, uh, I mentioned there could be you know, food businesses tend to have three, two, three, four types of core software products. For example, it could be their EPOS, which is their till system. It could be a procurement or an accountancy system or time and attendance. What we do is we create a bit of software that will take some key figures from their systems and then integrate it with Digitally so then they can see essentially a mini P&L of their business on a, on a weekly basis. And Patrick, has it been capital intensive to develop the software and how have you funded that? Well, we started off by bootstrapping, by getting a bank loan here and there. We then went to the local Leo, got a grant there. We went to New Frontiers, which was part of a... Uh, the Galway, uh, uh, Galway Leo, the local enterprise office, um, they assisted us with that. The New Frontiers, we had two levels of that. Uh, that was very helpful. We then went uh, with the NDRC, which hosted a, an acceleration course at the time, a 12-week intensive acceleration program. That was really good. That's where that brought us was, it wasn't just a course, sit down in the class and off you go. It was right first six weeks, it's looking at your value proposition and validating that product. So where is your where is the value? Who are you selling it to? The second part then was more based around the financial financials and the plan. As on exit from that program, we then went to uh, we know, knew we wanted to raise some funds, and um, because I did have I was fortunate that I did have the experience of bootstrapping another business, I went to this one with all right. Let's let's get in external investment. Let's see if we're getting that real shot in the arm of money that will help you expand. So in December of 2020, I went on the Spark crowdfunding platform. I um, uh, We were looking for 200,000. Uh, we raised 280,000. Uh, and Enterprise Ireland, as part of the high potential startup, HPSU, matched it then with an additional 250,000. Uh, and then that's, that made us jump straight away from a team of uh, four to a team of 10. And of course, there's no straight lines in business. So talk to us about some of the setbacks and challenges that you had to overcome along the way. One simple one that comes to mind when it comes to raising raising funds. I remember one night I was um, uh, uh, on an evening out expecting a phone call. The phone call came. Uh, I was expecting an investment. And, uh, and someone said, no, look, it's not something that we're going to do. Uh, it was a bit like breaking up with the, the girlfriend that you didn't want in the first place. It's not you, it's me. <laughs> and so, so what we, what I done was I called called someone. I said, "Geez, it's uh, I'm really disappointed. Um, this investment didn't it didn't happen. Like it didn't come off. I was sure it was going to happen." He said, "That's brilliant. That's great news." I said, "No, you didn't hear me right. I said it's it hasn't fallen through." And he says, "No." He said, "This is great because it means that you're now one step closer to getting your investment." You're not one step further away, you're one step closer because you've got a no. When you get a no, you can stop wasting your time and your energy on them and you can now focus on something different, something new, and then get a step closer to where you need to be. You need funds to grow and growing is what excites entrepreneurs and business owners. It's not raising funds. Raising funds is tough work. So the less time you spend raising funds, the more time you're able to develop the business. So it's getting that balance. And Patrick, of course, you have well and truly proven the Digitally software system here in Ireland. So what are your plans to take it into the international market? Yeah, we have one of our uh, team members is based in London. And we uh, hired them in September of last year. A really good, competent person, uh, a great communicator. So we're looking to to, uh, bring uh, our software to the UK. I mentioned we have some some customers uh, over here. Uh, we have one or two multinationals that we have that we're working with. We expect them, they've rolled out locally, but we expect them to then bring us globally. Uh, and the UK is the next starting point. Um, so I'm spending uh, about twice a month, I'm over there for a few days. Because again, I've got to be over there and meeting with people, knocking on doors, talking to people and making connections. We don't have that network over in the UK that we have in Ireland. So it's a matter then of expanding it uh, all the more and looking at other markets as well.
And in addition to other markets, is there potential here for you to be able to expand this offer to suit the needs and to meet the needs and solve the problems within other industries? Uh, there is, like, there's, uh, I mentioned with care homes, um, that that is one that we're, we're, we're looking at because they tend to be more care focused and resident focused rather than them being food professionals. So they have an allowance, for example, on a daily basis that they need to keep within budget. Uh, so we have a profitability tool that will assist those businesses in making making sure that, that that element of their business is secured. Contract catering is another one. Again, it's multi-site food businesses where each site is controlled and run on its own merits. Uh, and it has to be profitable. But yet there's a need for to be able to keep it going on an ongoing basis. Uh, at the profitability, that is. There is the non-food aspect. Um, when it comes to building materials, construction materials, that type of thing. But to be honest, I'm really trying to concentrate on the food aspect because if you're all things to everyone, then it, it just means that you can come across a bit more scattered. Well, if you've just tuned in, that was Patrick McDermott from Digitali, and I look forward to watching this company on its upward growth trajectory. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick.